the uh, so Ask the Schneider guy. No, yeah. no. <laughs> I'll take an answer at that. So, um, uh, real quick. Let's just start, start with John, because yeah, he hasn't spoken uh, for a little that, while. That's, that. that's a great question for us. That's, that's where we live and play, right? Because most of the information that our product monitors uh, potentially does mirror or piggyback information that, that's being picked up by BMS, right? BMS, by definition, building management system, and it does that great. Uh, BMS, though, exists in just about, it exists in this building. This building is not a data center. So information that's needed, Andy used the term before, convergence. And we talk at all of these conferences about how do we bridge the gap between facilities and IT. Well, no product does that. There's not a product that bridges the gap. And even that convergence would make an unfair assumption that everyone in facilities and everyone in IT is in alignment in their silos. And we know that's not true. But what we look to do is take information that traditionally is monitored and reported via BMS and roll it up into a dashboard where in a non-intrusive uh, uh, manner, I should say, I've been in meetings where individuals from the IT group, the facilities group, and the C-level executive suite were all using FieldView to look at a dashboard, reporting on information that they could all understand in a platform that's accessible from any place in the world because we happen to be browser-based. That can't happen in a BMS environment. Right? The information is not shared so, so easily. So that's one example of why I think you would want uh, it, information it, in addition to BMS. It does seem, I understand his point in a way, it does seem as though you're spending twice you, to, to um, get a lot of the no, same information. No, but that's what these guys, that's what these guys, these guys' challenges are. I think that's, when you look at price and cost, it's exactly what the challenge is, is because I'm already going out and getting, you know, our data center that we just turned up in Ashburn. I have a SCADA system for the electric plant. I have a SCADA system for our critical mechanical controls. I have a BMS system. I have a battery monitoring system. I have an environmental temperature monitoring suite. I have a power monitoring suite, right? We can go on, right? right? And now I want to go bring a few of you, CEO, CFO, CIO. I want to pay these guys to make them all talk once another. You know right. what their response typically is me? Is, let's see, who owns four of these pieces? Why can't we make these guys do it? So. I think these guys are too big in spite of themselves sometimes, and you know who you are, right? So then you get guys like FieldView and SnapSense who go, we know we can do this. But now you've got the C-level guys going, I just paid for 10 products to do all this, and you want to buy another product to make all these talk? It, that's a huge issue. That's a huge issue. But the guys who are innovating and who are doing exactly what you're talking about are the smaller, agile, been there, done that, right? Did you come from data operations? Absolutely. I know Ray did. Right? That's why they probably did these startup companies is because of that exact frustration. Right, so right. very quickly, I, I when a real we get because I know it's your is, field. Is yeah. When we started, obviously, and we still believe in this, is you need to be a fully open system that can integrate with building automation systems yeah. and other systems, which we Absolutely. do. Because if you've already paid for it, you shouldn't throw it away. Correct. But if you look at our roadmap from day one, We've slowly transitioned the product to the point where we have new customers now designing brand new data centers, where we are probably you know, 70 or 80% of the full solution that they're using for, to control yeah. their data center. And these are very large new colos. I, I mean, maybe so. theoretically this is only for a data center. They don't need a well, BMS. Well, and that's the other difference I'll throw out there. He says, you know, why would a not a big BMS company do this? Well, you know what? That's thank God for venture capital, right? You know, we have people that are backed us that basically took a $50 million bet so far, you know, assuming Pete, we don't raise any more money. But, and we've invested that money 100% to do data centers. You know, you go, if you're working for you name a company and say, I want $50 million to go develop a product for a market that we don't even know if it exists, by the way, yet, and maybe we think, you know, since 451 says it's gonna be a billion dollars, that's wonderful in a couple of years. That's the reason that BMS guys haven't done it because there's a lot more office buildings out there and it's a lot easier to take that product and put that investment in traditional yeah. spaces. Yeah. You have to have someone that's willing to bet on one segment and that's what we've done.